Hello, I'm Joe Ferrace and welcome to another video. This one's a little bit different than the previous ones in that it, it will cover both film-based and digital infrared photography. Before we get started with uh, the actual nitty-gritty, the nuts and bolts of creating infrared images, I want to take a look at it's kind of the the science and don't let that scare you. You can fast forward ahead to the filter kit if you want, but I'll give it to you as quickly as I can. Light is measured by its wavelength in nanometers. Now nanometer is equivalent to a billionth of a meter. The visible light spectrum, that's what uh, human eyeballs can see, you can see between 380 to 700 nanometers of wavelength of light. To give you an idea how big 700 nanometers is, it's one millimeter long. So it's pretty tiny. Now all these nanometers have to do with the way that we capture and the tools that we use to capture infrared images. So why don't we jump right into the first part and take a look at my filter kit. Here's the kit that I created when I first got into infrared photography. And really the least expensive way that you can get into infrared photography, whether it's film or digital, is by using filters. Filters have a lot of advantages. They're relatively inexpensive. They used to be much more inexpensive, but even the least expensive filter that I'll show you here has gotten expensive and, and the size of the filter will make a difference in what it costs. If you get big filters, they're gonna cost you a lot less than smaller ones. So, let's take a look what's inside my kit. Let's take a look at the Koken filter. It has a couple of different names depending on when it was made. Uh, originally, and this one is one of the older ones, is, uh, is called 007, that's right, it's 007. It's the filter James Bond uses. It's also known as the 89B filter. 89B is part of the Rattan system. Kodak invent, actually didn't invent the Rattan system. They bought Rattan and Rattan, which was a British company. And that whole history is in a blog, blog post that I'll put below here so that if you really want to get into the history of where those numbers come from, uh, you can dig it out there. It will filter out light past 720 nanometers. So the human eye sees 700. This blocks up to 720, allowing the infrared spectrum to hit your film or your digital sensor. This is a, one of the more popular uh, uh, filter designations. The way that most uh, Koken filters work is they slip into a holder. But one of the problems with that when shooting with it, and that works great if you're taking pictures of sunrises with one of their warming filters or maybe one of their graduated density filters. But if you're shooting infrared, it doesn't work all that good because light, infrared light can seep in through the sides of the holder. So what I usually do is physically hold this right up against the lens when I use this filter. The first normal looking well, if you could call an infrared filter normal. The first normal looking filter I bought was the uh, uh, Hoya R72. This was very inexpensive back in the day. I, I remember I learned about this filter when I was teaching a workshop in, in uh, Miami. And one of my students had some really nice pictures that she had made uh, that were infrared. And I said, boy, that's great. How'd you do that? And she said, I got this, uh, the Hoya R72 filter. They're very cheap, she said. They were like 32 bucks. So I bought one right away and started shooting infrared images with my digital camera. And it remains the least expensive option, but at the same time, it isn't cheap anymore. And you'd be lucky to find one under 60 bucks. But again, it depends on the size. Most, my, the other two, this filter and the other filter that are in my kit are both 58 because I bought these during a time when I was shooting everything with Canon DSLRs. A 58 was a more or less standard kind of uh, filter size on many of those lenses. The Mac Daddy of all infrared filters is obviously 
the Singray I-Ray filter. If you know anything about Singray filters, you know that they are first and foremost the highest quality filters you can buy. They, they're nothing, they're built to a standard, they're not built to a price point. So they are expensive. And their infrared version, uh, I, I think uh, when I bought mine, it was like $175. And I think they, the prices hover around that right then. And it's called the iRay. And I did some side-by-side -side tests with the iRay and other infrared filters once upon a time. And there's no doubt in my mind that the iRay is going to produce the best results. And it cuts off light up to visible light up to 830 nanometers. Now the Hoy R72, like the 89B, goes to 720 nanometers. Since I bought this filter, Singray came out with another filter called the uh, Custom, or because I think the normal one is called the Standard. This is called the Custom. Uh, their name, the name of the filters, kind of varies if you look at their website even. The Singray Custom filter cuts off at 690 nanometers. And what that means is they allow some uh, visible light to pass through. What this does for you as a photographer is it lets you create the blue sky effect that you've seen in some of my images, and I'll try to stick one in here somewhere. Uh, it's very dramatic. You get the stark white foliage, and you get beautiful blue skies. And you can only do that by allowing some visible light through. So you can do, uh, you can buy both filters, it's gonna cost you a lot of money, or you can buy one or the other. Either way, uh, the Singray is gonna give you the best possible results. But I recognize that not everybody can afford these. So the, the, you can't hardly beat the, the price of the, the Hoya R72. It's probably the best single filter to get started, whether you're shooting digital or film. Using filters for making infrared photographs has some pros and cons. The number one pro is that the cost of entry is relatively low. I've said it here before and in my last video, perhaps, photography has never been cheap. But if you want to get into infrared and the least possible expense using a filter, whether it's film or digital, the uh, using filters is the best way to go. Now, the disadvantage, if you haven't already picked up on it when I was holding up those filters, they are dark. The, you cannot actually physically see through them. So what I found is that um, most digital cameras will, will see through them, especially mirrorless cameras. With film cameras, you're gonna have to take off the, off the filter to focus and then put it back on to make your exposure. And those exposures are going to be really, really long. And that means you're gonna need a tripod. They probably already have a tripod, so it's not going to be a big expense. But those are the pros and the cons of using infrared filters. I really would really appreciate it if you give this video a like, or even better, subscribe to this channel. It really would help out a lot. Before we close, I want to talk a little bit about film. Consider this a little video postscript. In my refrigerator is an expired roll of Kodak Professional High Speed Infrared Black and White Film. Let's see, the ex expiration date on this was June 1996. Now, in my experience with black and white film is that the ex expiration date doesn't seem to affect the, the film as much as uh, color film aging. So we'll find out, and I plan to shoot this. I also plan on shooting some of the uh, Rolly or Ilford infrared film. So we haven't given up on film photography. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. And we're going to go infrared with film too. And speaking of film, I got this email from a kind woman in Dallas, Sheila. And she says, I read your blog about your Canon AV-1 having problems with high shutter speeds and you're wanting to try to shoot at slower ones. Here's a roll of film, it's expired, 
that might help. It has an ISO of 50, but you should shoot it at 25 and get you should get good exposures and great color. This is a roll of Agfa Ultra 50. 24 exposure roll. Let's see what the exp expiration date is. Uh, oh, 2 February 2000. So it's only 22 years old. But first of all, I want to thank Sheila for sending this. This is going to be fun to try in my Canon AV-1 to see if I, the slower shutter speeds uh, will work in that camera or that's going to wind up being a, a shelf monster instead of a camera that I can actually use, which would make Mary happy because she gave it to me for Christmas. So if you would like to send me some film to test and use in my uh, blog posts or in these videos, I have an address below, a post office box where you can send film. And I promise you all, A, use it, thank you for it on one of these videos, and see what kind of images we can create together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again real soon.